OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has been dropping some wild details about their upcoming model, GPT-5, while speaking at universities across the globe. He claims GPT-5 is already smarter than him, talks about how the path to AGI is looking surprisingly smooth, and even reveals OpenAI's secret weapon, an internal AI model that could become the world's top-ranked competitive programmer by the end of 2025. Let's get into it. So first up, here's Sam Altman speaking at the Technical University of Berlin about just how smart he expects GPT-5 to be. How many people feel smarter than GPT-4? <laughs> okay, how many of you think you're still going to be smarter than GPT-5? <laughs> I was expecting many. more hands here. <laughs> um, I don't think I'm going to be smarter than GPT-5, and I don't feel sad about it because I think it just means that we'll be able to use it to do incredible things. And, you know, like we want more science to get done. Uh, we want more, we want to enable researchers to do things they couldn't do before. This is the history of, this is like the long history of humanity. Um, it does feel a little different this time because of what this can enable. But if scientists can do things because they have like a crazy high IQ tool and they can focus more on figuring out the right questions to ask, address things quicker, do their search space faster, uh, that's just a win for all of us. So we're thrilled to get to enable that. Now, obviously, human intelligence and artificial intelligence are just fundamentally different. There are things that humans are very good at that are extremely difficult for AI and vice versa. For example, AI can beat grandmasters in chess or solve complex math problems in seconds. But getting a robot to do something as simple as folding laundry is still incredibly difficult. So when Sam Altman claims that GPT-5 will be smarter than him, it raises an important question. What does smarter really mean? Does it mean having a higher IQ? Because if we look at this website, tracking the IQ of major AI models, the scores don't seem all that reliable. I mean, you've got OpenAI's O1 preview leading the pack with an IQ of 119, yet O1 Pro, the exact same model with even more compute power, somehow scores lower at 110. That doesn't really add up. Plus, how reliable are IQ tests anyway, especially when it comes to measuring intelligence in AI? Traditional IQ tests are designed for humans, testing reasoning, logic, and pattern recognition in ways that don't necessarily translate to machine intelligence. So if even the best AI models are getting inconsistent scores, can we really use IQ as a meaningful metric for AI's capabilities? But anyway, this video isn't about IQ scores. What really matters is how smarter AI models like GPT-5 will translate that intelligence into real world impact. And that brings us to this next clip, where Sam Altman talks about the path to AGI, why he thinks it's going to be surprisingly smooth, and what we can expect in the coming years. I think at this point, we're kind of close enough that the precise definition of AGI matters. You know, by the time you have a world expert in every field working together tirelessly, I think that's beyond what most people would consider AGI. Um, so, so I think rather than talk about, you know, when we're going to get there or whatever, I, or, or, yeah, I, sorry, that was really inarticulate. I would say, I think we'll get to something in the next couple of years that many people will look at and say, I really didn't think a computer was going to do that. And, and then I think we'll get to something that can do the scientific progress question, you know, 10 years of science in a year or whatever. Uh, that's further out, but that, that will be the moment where I think the world really kind of changes much more quickly and, and gets huge benefit. Uh, it does look like we're on a pretty steep trajectory. There was, you know, people love to be the doomsayers. So there was all this stuff last year about scaling's over. This is, you know, not going to work. And we found a new paradigm. And we now have these reasoning models. And they are really smart. And that's going to scale for a while. And then I expect after that, we'll find another paradigm again. So one, one thing I've learned in general is whenever you see these steep exponential curves in technology, you shouldn't bet against them. And I think you should all be very skeptical when people start saying, this is about to run out, or that's about to run out, or we're going to hit this limit. It does look to us like we have this fundamental unlock of an algorithm that can really truly learn, and that's going to keep going. We will hit stumbling blocks. We'll have to figure out how to overcome them. But I think we will get to AGI and beyond, and it'll just be a pretty smooth scaling from here. So a couple of things that stand out here. Firstly, Altman mentions that once these AI systems can accelerate scientific discovery, where we see, for example, 10 years of progress condensed into just one year, is when the world will truly start to change at an unprecedented pace. Now, while this is likely further than a couple of years away, the steep trajectory we're on doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. 
As you pointed out, people will argue that we are hitting a wall or that scaling is reaching its limits. But when you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, it's clear that not only has AI progress not slowed down, it's actually been accelerating exponentially. So if AI progress hasn't been slowing down, what's been driving this exponential growth? Well, with OpenAI's GPT series, we saw the rise of the pre-training scaling law. Increasing the amount of high quality training data and expanding the model's parameter size both directly and predictably enhance its intelligence. Now, with every new GPT model, all the way from GPT-1 to GPT-4, OpenAI has been increasing the model size by roughly 100x. And each time they do this, they require 100 times more compute power. Therefore, going from GPT-4 to GPT-5 would require insane amounts of compute that OpenAI simply doesn't have, at least not yet. But here is where the new scaling paradigm that OpenAI discovered, called test time compute, comes into play. Instead of relying solely on massive pre-training runs, they found that allocating more compute at inference time, when the model is actually answering your question, leads to huge performance gains, especially in reasoning capability. They also found that this new scaling law isn't just more efficient, it's also much faster. As OpenAI researcher Noam Brown posted last month, we announced O1 just three months ago, and today we announced O3. We have every reason to believe the trajectory will continue. So instead of waiting one to two years for a new model like we did with the GPT series, which follows pre-training scaling, we can now be seeing a new O series model every few months. This means we now have two scaling laws at play, train time compute, also known as pre-training scaling, and test time compute, or inference time scaling. And as Altman hinted, we may eventually see a third scaling law emerge. But now, here's the real question. What happens when a company like OpenAI gets access to $500 billion to build out its AI infrastructure? With that level of funding, they wouldn't just scale their GPT series and O series models. They could potentially combine both scaling laws to create something even more powerful. We're doing this new project called Stargate that has about 100 times the computing power of our current computer because we want to answer exactly that question. Um, we used to be in a paradigm where we only did pre-training. And each GPT number, one, two, three, four, each of those was exactly 100x of, or not exactly, but very close to 100x. And at each of those, there was a major new emergent thing. Um, internally, we've gone all the way to about a, maybe like a 4.5. So if you want to get to a 5.5, you would need that 100x more. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. The most important thing that happened in the field, or at least to us in the last year, is these new models that can do reasoning. Um, they are an incredible new compute efficiency gain. And we can get performance on a lot of benchmarks that in the old world we would have predicted wouldn't have come until GPT-6, something like that, from, from models that are much smaller by doing this reinforcement learning. Um, so we kind of have a sense. Now, the trick is when we do it this new way, it doesn't get better at everything. We can get it better in certain dimensions. But we, we can now, I think, more intelligently than before say that if we were able to pre-train a much bigger model and do this where it would be, and the thing that I would expect based off of what we're seeing with a jump like that is the first bits or sort of signs of life on genuine new scientific knowledge. So right now, GPT-4 can, or let's not, let's, that's even too easy. Let's say like O3, our very latest best model. Um, that can program unbelievably well. And if people have already done it, it's not so good at going to like invent totally new algorithms and that's the, or new physics or new biology. And that's the thing I think you'll get with the next two orders of magnitude. So I truly think we haven't seen anything yet. If you think OpenAI's O1 or O3 models are good, or even if you think GPT-4 is good, just wait until you see how insane the models are going to be in the next few years. It's important to realize, as we touched on earlier, that we're on an exponential curve, meaning we're not just seeing AI progress, we're seeing the rate of progress itself accelerate. This is how technology works. Just 20 years ago, barely anyone had access to high-speed internet. And now we have AI assistants, self-driving cars, and smartphones that outperform the best computers from the early 2000s. Now, I don't want to turn the excitement you're likely feeling right now into anxiety, but in this next clip, Sam Altman talks about the insane progress they've been making in getting these models to code at a whole other level. Take a look. It's really quite, the, the progress 
over the, the recent scale is quite amazing. Our, our very first reasoning model um, was like a top one millionth competitive programmer in the world. People thought that was very impressive. It's like, wow, an AI, it's you know, the millionth best people that do this, that's pretty good. Um, we then had a model that got to like a uh, top 10,000. Uh, 03, which we talked about publicly in December, is the 175th best program competitive programmer in the world. I think our internal benchmark is now around 50, and maybe we'll hit number one by the end of this year. So that's like an amazing rate of scale for more compute in this new paradigm, and we don't see any signs of that stopping. So definitely a tough day to be a software engineer. But seriously, this is a wild prediction. He is claiming that by the end of this year, 2025, we might see a model that is the best competitive programmer on the planet. While I'm not sure how this test or this benchmark he is referring to translates to real world applications, this would still represent a major milestone in AI development. If an AI model can outperform the world's best competitive programmers, it suggests that these models are becoming not just tools, but true problem solvers capable of tackling complex coding challenges at an elite level. I mean, the implications of this go far beyond coding competitions. This could completely reshape entire industries from software engineering to even scientific discovery. Anyways, that's all for today. We are truly witnessing the beginning of a new technological era, likely the biggest one humanity has ever seen. And this is really only just a start. I'm excited to watch how this all plays out with you guys. And on that note, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss what's coming next.